This call is being recorded. Again, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call on the Friday Night Lights edition. I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy of New Harvest E-Church in Harvest, Alabama. We welcome you tonight to our um, praise and worship and conference call. We just just enjoying the Lord tonight. We have a wonderful guest speaker. She has been on the line before to preach and teach and even share in prayer with, in, in prayer with us. Um, she is my friend. Uh, she lives here in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, in particular, live in Harvest, Alabama. You know, we're basically around the corner from. Uh, she's uh, a sister to me. She's like a mother to me. She she's just an all around friend to our family. Uh, her church is um, um, Faith, Hope, and Deliverance um, Center of Hope, where people come from all over to come in and and sit under her teaching and her guidance and her direction. And and then God sends them forth to do marvelous and mighty things. I I, I love her ministry. I love her spirit. She's a woman of God, uh, very caring to to everyone that she comes in contact with. Matter of fact, I, I, I have to say it like this. Once you meet her, you've met a friend. And, and and everyone she meets, she treats them as a child of God. And I, I love that about her spirit. And so tonight um, we had um, uh, one of her ministers scheduled to, to preach, um, but he had other engagements going on, uh, Minister Freddie uh, Burnett. But she's going to step in for him, and we're going to schedule uh, Minister Burnett at a later time. So at this time, I want to introduce to 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 all and present to all uh, our guest speaker for tonight, uh, who who gladly stepped in, Pastor Sadie Jackson of um, Faith, Hope, and Deliverance Church in uh, Huntsville, Alabama. Preach the word, Pastor Jackson. Let the Lord use you. Amen. Praise, praise God. Surely we give praise, honor, and glory unto our God tonight for his goodness and his mercy that he has shown towards us, his children. We thank God for giving us another opportunity to share with you, his people, what thus says the Lord. Tonight we want to look into the book of Colossians. Praise be to God. But before we look into Colossians, we want to Unify our minds in prayer. So if you will, just uh, pray with me just for a moment. Praise be to God. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. Lord God, we magnify and we bless your holy name. Father, we come at this hour with much thanksgiving in our hearts. We come looking to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Knowing, O oh God, that you said in your word that when we seek you first, your kingdom and your righteousness, that all things will be added unto us. So, Father, we come tonight trusting in you with all of our hearts, not leaning to our own understanding, but in all of our ways acknowledging you, knowing that you said that when we acknowledge you, that you would direct our path. So, Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. Now, Father God, I ask that you will anoint the ears of your people afresh. Anoint us, God, then give us ears to hear and a heart to receive what you, through your spirit, is going to reveal in this hour. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Praise God. If you will, turn with me to the book of Colossians, Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at verse 1. And the word of God reads, If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitting 
at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When when Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Praise be to God. We want to focus our attention tonight on the scripture coming from the second verse. The scripture text says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. God has told us in his word that we are not to be conformed to the things of this world, but we are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. When our mind is renewed in Christ Jesus, we no longer are are led by the things of this world. We are getting ready to celebrate what is called Christmas. Praise be to God. We know that the world celebrates Christmas differently from us who have come to the knowledge of understanding why we celebrate this time of the year. We know that Jesus is the reason that we celebrate this time of the year. But the world teaches us it has turned what something that is so sacred into a uh, commercial. Everything has been commercialized today. It's all about purchasing and buying and selling. But we who are of God, we set our mind on things that are above, where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions on our behalf. We set our mind on things above because We read in his word that he said that where your heart is, that's where your treasure is also. So we look in the book of Matthew, the sixth chapter, praise be to God. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Give me just a moment to turn here, praise God. Matthew 6 beginning at verse 19. And, well, we'll begin at verse 19. It said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So we are not to get caught up in the worldly activity of going out, buying and presenting Christmas gifts like the world world does. There's nothing wrong with sharing and giving of gifts because we know at the time of our Lord and Savior birth that the wise men bought gifts and laid them before him. So we know that there is nothing wrong with that, but we don't allow ourselves to be caught up in the gift giving, but to be caught up in the fact that the greatest gift that was ever given was the gift that was given by our Lord. He gave of himself. He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So those of us who have accepted and received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we have set our mind on heavenly things, not on earthly things not on those things that we go and buy and store up and then 
someone decides that they want to come and take it from us. I was watching the news tonight, and they were sharing on the news how people were watching the UPS truck and the express truck when, uh, uh, well, the FedEx truck, when they come and they deliver the packages to the people in the neighborhood, how the thieves will come as soon as they drop the packages off and steal the packages off of their porches and uh, their balconies or wherever they had left them. Those earthly things, those earthly treasures, they don't really matter. Those things, the, the thieves can come and steal and they can take away. But when we get those heavenly treasures, those heavenly treasures we can hide in our hearts. And when we hide it in our heart, men can't take it away. Because they are earthly, uh, not earthly, but heavenly treasures. Earthly treasures can be taken away. But heavenly treasures, they are stored in our hearts. The, it's the word of God that we have hid in our hearts. King David said, thy word I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. Word of God is a heavenly treasure that we receive and store up, and it causes us to be built up and rooted and grounded in Him. And when we do this, our mind is, our mindset is to always keep Him in the forefront of our minds. And when we keep Him in the forefront of our minds, we know that we have what God says that we have. We have the things that are needful for our sustainment. But most of all, we have that heavenly treasure. We have Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. His love is in our heart. When the love of God is in our heart, it causes us to reach out and love one another, one another to share forth the treasures that we have received, to encourage others that when you set your mind on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father, he said that when you seek him, when you seek him first, you, his kingdom and his righteousness, all of those things that are needful for our sustainment, he will supply us with those things. But our focus is to seek those things that are going to be treasures in our heart not treasures upon the earth. We look back at the book of Colossians in the second chapter. Praise God. In the second chapter of Colossians. Praise you, Jesus. When we look there in the second chapter... Bless you, O oh God. Lost my space. We find here that the Word of God tells us that in Him, in Jesus Christ, who is our heavenly treasure, that we are, we have been circumcised in our mind. Our mind has been transformed, and we are also find in the 12th chapter of Romans, where the Apostle Paul admonishes us to be transformed and renewed in our mind. I believe the word of God says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable and that second verse said, and be not conformed to the things of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. When our mind is renewed, we set our mind on things which are above. We re- 
receive the things of God. God has put his love in our heart, and because his love is in our heart, we reach out to try and help those who are less fortunate than we are. We love the brethren. We do all those things that God has commanded us to do, loving one another, forgiving one another, lifting one another up, encouraging one another. These are all heavenly treasures that we have within us when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and we put on the new man, the new man who is created in the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I say to you again, brothers and sisters, let us continue to seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. He said, set your mind on things above, not upon things on the earth, because the things that we accumulate on this earth, the moths and the thieves and robbers can come in and steal. But if you put the word of God in your heart, receive it in your heart, and store up earth heavenly treasures, no one can come and steal that away from you. So let us not forget that as we go through this season of celebrating. Let us remember why we are celebrating. And remember that he is the way, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. It is in him that we live, we move, and have our being. So set your mind on him. Jesus has told us in his word, he said, that he would keep us in perfect peace if we keep our mind stayed on him. So let us set our mind on heavenly things, not upon earthly things, but seeking those things that will bring joy, bring peace and happiness. Let us encourage one another and lift one another up. The Word of God tells us also in this third chapter of Colossians, beginning at verse 12, the Word of God says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, uh, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, to whom also You were called in one body and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart unto the Lord. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Remember what God through his spirit has spoken to our spirit in this hour. Let us keep our mind focused on him. Set our mind on heavenly things, not upon the things of this earth, because all of those things are going to perish. They're going to fade away. And it's one thing I have learned down through the years. I've seen many brothers and sisters go to sleep. And when they go to sleep in Christ, uh, whether they were in Christ or not, none of the earthly treasures that they have accumulated here upon this earth goes in that ground with them. They go in just as they came into the world. The old folks used to say, you came into this world with nothing, and you're going to depart this life with nothing. So set your mind on heavenly things, those things that are eternal. 
that one day when the trumpet is sounded, we who have gone to sleep in our Lord, when the trumpet is sounded, we are going to get up. We're going to get up out of that grave. And we are going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And the scripture says, there shall we ever be with him. So again, I say to you, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right right hand of the Father. And lean not to your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him. And in doing so, he will direct your path. Remember. There is nothing too hard for our God. Our God, he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think. So set your mind on things above. Seek him. Seek after him and his righteousness. And be transformed and renewed in your spirit. Giving all praise, glory, and honor to our Savior. Knowing that it's in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. So seek after him and his righteousness. And we shall receive all those things that he has predestined for our livelihood while we are here, yet here upon the earth those things that are needful to sustain us while while we're here. God will supply us with those things. But most of all, seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. God bless you. God keep you. I pray that you have received something from what the Spirit of God has revealed in my spirit to share with you tonight. Let his word dwell in you richly. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jackson. You you started reading a verse, and I wanted to, to just amplify a verse that you started to read over in the second chapter of Colossians. Mm-hmm. He says, in him you were also circumcised with, with the circumcision made without hand. By putting off the body of sin of the flesh and by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you were raised with him through faith in the Mm -hmm. work of God who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he, Mm -hmm. he has made alive together with him. Having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped wiped out the handwriting of requirements that were against us, which Mm -hmm. was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, cross. having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them triumphing yes. over them. And and, and, and and I was like, ooh yeah, that's 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 and that heavenly treasure. You you talked about the word of God. You talked about the love of God. You talked about the forgiveness of God. And 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 what just bubbled up in my spirit as you were preaching that was this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. I got Hallelujah. It. You got it? Everybody who wants it can have yeah. it. It is the greatest gift in the world, Jesus the Christ. Yes. Yeah. And if you, you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you haven't received that gift of joy, that gift of peace, that gift of love, that gift of his word, that gift of forgiveness, these treasures no one can take from you if you have not received it. I want to offer it to you tonight. It's a free gift. And the word of God tells us that all you have to do is confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus 
and believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. In other words, you will receive all of these gifts that do not rust, moth can't eat them, and the world can't take them from you. So we offer to you the gift of salvation tonight. And we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray right now. We confess, I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart as that special gift. I invite you, Jesus to become the Lord of my life, the rule and the reign in my heart from this day forward. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you prayed that prayer tonight and you really believe it and confess it with your mouth, you are now saved and you have received the gift of salvation. Oh, what joy. What joy. The world can't take it from you. The world didn't give it to you. That's the joy. Heavenly treasures of being with the Lord forever and ever. Seek that which is of above. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our prayer. Amen. Amen. 